Hey there, and welcome to another X32 slash M32 quick tip here on the Zava Sound YouTube channel. My name is Don Odom, and thanks for joining me today. Today, we are going to be discussing the solo function and reference monitoring system on the X32 and M32. Before we begin, I would just like to give a quick overview of what reference monitoring is and the purpose behind it. It is pretty much all in the name. Uh, as audio engineers, uh, sometimes we want to be able to hear one or a few channels without having to hear them in the entire mix. So if we look at the right-hand side of the X32 to the right of the display, we can see a section called monitor. This entire block of uh, buttons and um, knobs is dedicated to uh, the type of operation we are going to be talking about today. Alright, so if you're like us here at Zava Sound and are on the uh, X32 Edit 2.5 software, we need to go to the monitor page to access the monitor functionality. So let's click monitor and bam, we are here. Uh, we have four tabs, monitor, talkback A, talkback B, and the oscillator, and we are going to be discussing the monitor tab today. So make sure you're on that tab right here. All right, so let's take a look at all the functions on this tab. First, we have a meter display for the monitor outputs, including the left-right XLR monitor outputs and the left-right quarter-inch outputs that are on the back of the console. We also have a headphone jack on both the far right and far left side of the console that is indicated by a little headphone logo. All right, and that is going to carry the monitor signal as well. We can control the output level of the headphone and rear monitor output separately with the two knobs labeled monitor and headphone to the right of the display. Under that we have a mono button that will simply uh, flip all the monitor outs and headphone outs from stereo to mono. Under that we have a dim button that will lower the volume of all monitor outs and headphone outs to a set volume and we will learn about that in a moment. Alright guys, uh, then we have a list of solo options if we come back to the monitor uh, tab here. We have exclusive. So I'm only realizing this now but since I was soloing uh, those channels you weren't going to hear it uh, because I was using the monitor outs. So that's a perfect example of soloing uh, inputs. Uh, basically what an exclusive solo is, is a, it's a channel by channel basis, meaning that uh, if I select channel 1 and then select channel 2, it's going to deactivate the solo on channel 1. Alright, my apologies about that guys. Alright, let's get back to the video. Alright, and then solo follow select, basically what that is, and I have to demonstrate that on the console, is when uh, we select a channel, the solo is going to follow. All right, and then uh, select follow solo. So if we solo a channel, it's automatically going to get selected. Then we have channel solo AFL and mix bus solo AFL. And you can look all this stuff up in the Behringer manual. I'm not looking to get too in depth of these solo options. And basically, uh, it's going to decide whether or not a channel is a post fader or um, pre fader. And same thing with the mix bus. And then we also have the DCA solo and the use dim for P PFL which is uh, another good function and you can again look all this stuff uh, up in the Behringer manual and I'll leave that uh, link in the description and then also use master fader so this is a cool one because uh, what you can basically do is control uh, the mute uh, with uh, the solo so basically if you um, mute the main fader output you can essentially mute the solo output uh, as well All right, and uh, you can turn that on or off. Again, I would suggest looking up um, all the AFL selections because uh, they can get pretty complex and you really need to know what you're doing in order to be utilizing them. The solo is going to work out of the box and it's going to work well for you. Alrighty, so uh, next we have a delay function to time align your monitors or headphones with the master bus. Uh, that's if you desire doing that. Sometimes you don't need to and you just do that by typing in your delay and uh, then just clicking the delay button to engage it. All right. Next, we have what is called a dim attenuation. And uh, this will essentially change how much dB is taken away when the dim button is engaged. All right. Then we have a global source trim, which will change the overall dB output level for the monitors and headphones. All right. Last but not least, we have the monitor source table, which essentially will change what source of audio the monitor output is listening to. All right, so we have left, right bus, left, right plus mono, left, right PFL, left, right AFL, aux uh, 5 and 6, and aux 7 3. All right, one other thing that is worthy of mentioning is the clear solo button above the left, right uh, master bus mute. So essentially, if we select a whole bunch of channels and then we want to mute, uh, not unmute them, 
uh, when we want to uh, disengage the solo for all of them at once, we can basically uh, just hit that button and it's going to get rid of all the solos and you can start from scratch. Alright, I hope I could answer all your questions about solos and monitors on the X32 and M32. If not, please do not hesitate to leave a comment. If you are looking to get in contact with a support specialist, contact us via our website, zavasound.com, by clicking the support tab. Or by sending us an email at support at zavasound.com. Make sure when submitting your ticket to provide your patron ID number from patreon.com and also a full description of your problem. Please follow us on Twitter at Zava Sound and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Zava Productions. Please stay tuned for the next X32 slash M32 quick tip and have a great day. Oh.